Well, um, we're going to start on vectors. Um, here's some of the ve here are vector basics. A vector is a quantity specified by its magnitude and a direction. Now, the scalar is the quantity specified by the magnitude alone. Alrighty, so if we have an example such as 65 miles per hour due north, that's a vector. The 65 miles per hour part is the scalar. Now, you'll hear it in different formats here. If they, they may say velocity and speed is our scalar. Alrighty, so it says here, when describing a vector, you must give both direction and a magnitude. So it has to be a direction and a magnitude. We will be using several, several methods to describe the direction of vectors. It says down here, describe the given vectors here. And we're looking at number one here. And at number one, let me scoot down. We have our compass, uh, north, south, east, and west. Um, notice we have five meters and it's going in a direction of south and east. South, we have a bearing of south 30 degrees east. Or you could say that it is a course of 150 degrees. Now, just a quick recall. Remember, bearing starts north and south and then moves east or west. And course always begins north and then goes clockwise around um, the compass. Okay? So, looking at number two, it would be 11 meters at a bearing of north 49 degrees west, or you could say 11 meters at a course of 311 degrees. Vectors are commonly denoted as an arrow where the tip indicates our direction and the tail depicts our origin or our starting point. And the length of the arrow is proportional to the magnitude of the vector. So that just like vector u and vector v here. Vector u has a greater magnitude because it's longer. It's longer drawn than vector v. So using vectors u, v, s, and t, we're going to perform the following uh, operations graphically. So here we have, um, they're asking us to add vector s plus vector u or vector u plus vector s. So for u and then s, I'm going to go ahead and take the u and uh, I did this earlier, so my apologies. I know it looks a little confusing, but here's vector u and try to make it nice and neat. There we go. I got the fancy smancy smart board here so I can use use the fancy smancy way of doing this. So there's my vector u. And then my vector s I have here. Here, let me grab it. Here we go. Here's vector s. And sure enough, again, tail to tip. So there we are. So this is my vector s. So u plus s gives us this long vector u plus s. And then it says the operations are commutative, meaning that u plus s is the same as s plus u. So that's why I went ahead and I tried this again. I tried this, I did this earlier. Oh shoot, I grabbed the wrong thing there. There we go. There we go, that's the one I want. So my starting point here, here's my s, and then plus u. And then sure enough, we end up with u plus s. And the blue one, oh, there we go. Oops, my goodness. That's the one I wanted right there. Notice, same length, same magnitude, and same direction as 
the other. Ah, there we go. Not the greatest connection on that one. It says the vector created by these kinds of operations is called the resultant. Now, on to the next one, on to the next page. I believe it's going to ask you to try one for yourself. So go ahead and pause and try one on your own. Okay, hopefully you got this picture. So we have V going uh, uh, down to the left or southwest looking. And then our S goes straight across. So sure enough, our V plus S is what the black line looks like here. Now, on scalar multiplication, it says scalar multiplication will multiply a vector by a constant, stretching it, compressing it, or reflecting it to move in the opposite direction. Using the vectors above, perform the indicated operations. So I'm going to cheat a little bit again, and I'm going to take, this says S, so I'm going to take my picture of S here, again, just so that you can see it. There's my S right there. So I'm taking my S, and then I'm going to attach, it says minus 2V. So here I have, right there, I have a negative V that I'm displaying here. So if V is going down and to the left, that means my negative V is going to be going up and to the right. And don't forget, it's tail to tip. So, I need to grab this guy and fail to tip. And then we need another of that same one. So, I'm going to go ahead and draw another one nice, really quickly. Not the greatest picture, but I'm hoping that you see it. So, there's another negative E. Oh, boy. I uh, didn't press the right button there. There we go. I think I got it this time. There we go. So we have here, we have here S minus 2V. So again, here is my S. There's S, and then we have negative V. Sorry. Oh, this is crazy. There we go. I should just take it. I should just write it. That's, I'm just going to write it because I'm wa wasting too much time. Negative V and another negative V. Okay. So S minus 2V is what that picture should look like. So do me a favor, do number five, and then we'll go over the answer. Okay, so going over, so we have 0.5t, and notice this is half of t, so we're going to take that 0.5t, and that's what it should look like, and then we are going to take u, there we go, remember, tail to tip, so 0.5t plus u, Take that U and bring it over here. Should look like that. Because here is my 0.5T. Here is my 0.5T right there. And then the U. So this is 0.5T U, right? that distance right there. Another way of measuring the direction and magnitude of a vector is to resolve it into its components. A vector and its x and its y components make a right triangle, just as in number of this example here. We can use trig ratios to solve for the vector's components here. So let's look at this first one, this, this example. Notice this is 11 meters on a bearing of 49 uh, north, 49 degrees west. So 11 meters 
on a bearing of north 49 degrees west. Now notice also that on this right triangle, this angle right here should be 41 degrees, 41 degrees. So what we're trying to do is we're going to break this guy into its components by um, its movement horizontally and its movement ver vertically. Remember, its movement horizontally is going to be our x value, that's the movement horizontally, and then the movement vertically is going to be our y value right there. Now, to find these movements, what we're going to do is we're going to use what we have to find what our horizontal movement was and what our vertical movement was. So notice, going back to Sokotoa, we have our hypotenuse here. We also have an angle. Okay, we have the hypotenuse and we have an angle. So we can definitely use anything that deals with the hypotenuse, whether it be sine or cosine. Um, unfortunately, we can't use tangent because we don't have the opposite or the adjacent. So I'm going to go ahead and use cosine to be able to solve for one of my values. Okay, I set it up. So the cosine of 41 degrees is equal to x over 11. Remember, we're going to, we can definitely cross multiply here. So we end up with x is equal to 11 times the cosine of 41 degrees. So we would go into our calculator and 11 times the cosine of 41 degrees is a negative 8.301. Now the reason it's negative is because we're going in that left direction, the negative direction on the x. Now let's go ahead and find the y. Now hopefully you found out that y turned out to be 7.216 because you multiplied uh, the sine of, you set it up as the sine of 41 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is y over 11. So 11 times the sine of 41 degrees is 7.216. Now, do number six and then we'll come back to it. Pause it and then I will share my answers with you. Now, hopefully you got the same thing. So we have our vector B is 25 meters bearing on, on south 70 degrees east, or you could have said course of 110 degrees. Um, notice there is a 20 degrees in, within that triangle, that right triangle that the vector made with the x-axis. So we end up with the cosine of 20 degrees is equal to x over 25, which gives us x giving our horizontal movement, our horizontal movement of 23.49 in the positive direction. And a vertical movement of a negative 8.55 because it's going down in this situation. So those are our components of this vector, our horizontal movement and our vertical movement. Now here it says there are two ways that we can write it, the component form of the vectors. So here we have our vector A, negative 8.302, that is our movement left, and 7.2. 217 is our movement up. Now we can also write it, or there's another way to write it, is a negative 8.302i and then plus 7.217j. So all that i and j are is the again horizontal movement. And the J is the vertical movement. 
You also can use this idea in reverse. Before we had the magnitude and the angle, this time around, we have the components and we can find the magnitude of the vector and the direction of the vector, the angle. Notice here we have our movements, our X and our Y movement, 11 meters and 14 meters up. And we want to find the magnitude of this vector. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to be able to find that or the distance formula to be able to find that. Now we have our vector and notice if we put, write it in component form, we have 11 to the right, 14 up, or you could say 11i plus 14j. So we're going to find this magnitude and to find the magnitude, the way we usually write magnitude is like this or you'll see it also like this, okay? So here we have the magnitude of vector v is the square root of 11 squared plus 14 squared. Our distance formula turns out to be 17.804 meters magnitude. Now to find the direction, we're going to use tangent of theta to help us out because we have the opposite over the adjacent so we can find our angle by using the inverse tangent of 14 over 11. Alrighty, so I ended up with the theta being 51.84 degrees as our angle. So that's this angle right here, okay? Which means that my bearing is north 38.16 degrees east or a course of 38.6 degrees, 0.16 degrees. So I'd like for you to do number seven and then I'm gonna pause it and we'll go over the answers. Okay, now going over this, notice we have 25 meters going towards the west, uh, 32 meters going north. Um, so our horizontal and our vertical movement, notice our horizontal movement is a negative. Um, so you would say negative 25 and 32. Um, negative 25 I, should, that should be an I, um, plus 32 J. Um, then we're going to be getting, we got the magnitude and the magnitude, remember we take the distance formula. So that is the square root of negative 25 squared plus 32 squared. I ended up with the square root turning out to be 40.608 meters magnitude. That is vector U, the magnitude of vector U. Now to get the, its direction, we would take the tangent of 32 over negative 25 and to get theta. So that theta turns out to be a negative uh, 52 degrees. But remember, this is a reference angle. So we don't have to put the negative in that regard. Um, you end up with a bearing of north 38 degrees west. So here's my 38 degrees right there because this guy is my 52 degrees. And, or you could say it's a course of 322 degrees. Now, it says the same vector operations that we did graphically now can be done algebraically. To add or subtract vectors, we add or subtract our components. And to multiply by the scalar, we multiply the components. Alrighty, last page, folks. So we have our vector V is three, negative four. Our vector W is two, negative eight and we should we can also write them write these vectors as vector v three i plus minus four j and the vector w we can write as two i minus eight j 
Now the questions that they're asking is what is vector V plus vector W? What is the magnitude of vector V plus vector W? Then what is the magnitude of vector V plus the magnitude of vector W? And by the way, remember that you'll be able to see it, they're, they're different. And what is the direction of the resultant vector? So um, I did the adding already. So all we're doing is adding our components, 3 plus 2, 5, negative 4 plus a negative 8 is a negative 12. So we can say that this is 5i minus 12j, or write it as a vector 5 and negative 12. Now we're going to find the um, magnitude of v plus w first, and then we'll do the others in just a now, hopefully this is what you got. So you took the square root of five squared plus negative 12 squared gives us the square root of 169, which gives us that the magnitude of V plus W is 13. On to the next step of finding the magnitude of V plus the magnitude of W separately. Now notice taking the magnitude of V turns out to be the square root of 25, which gives us five. And then the square root of W uh, square root of the mag uh, the magnitude of W, I should say, is 2 squared plus a negative 8 squared turns out to be the square root of 68, which uh, becomes approximately 13.25. So again, they are different than the magnitude of V plus W together. Alrighty, so the next thing is what is the direction for the resultant vector? In essence, what's the angle? So again, I'm always going to ask you to draw a picture. So that's what I'm going to do next. So finding the direction, we would take the tangent of the negative 12 over 5, which gives us our theta as a negative 67.38 degrees. Now also, um, remember it's a reference angle. So that's why that negative really doesn't matter, at least in this situation. So we end up with a bearing of south 22.62 degrees east, or you could say it's a course of 157.38 degrees. Now I'd like for you to try number eight, and then I'll go over the answers. Alrighty, so hopefully this is what you got. Um, v plus W this time, vector V plus vector W this time, turns out to be negative uh, 3, 4, or negative 3i plus 4j. The magnitude I ended up with turned out to be uh, 5 is our magnitude, 5 is uh, 5 units. Um, here is our um, north-south, our compass with the, the uh, picture added. So that means when we got our direction, to find the direction, we would take the tangent of theta is equaling uh, four over negative three. That means the inverse tangent of that is our theta. Our theta turns out to be the 53.13 uh, degrees. And that's our theta right there. So that means our bearing turns out to be north 36.87 degrees west because we start, again, we start north or south and move east or west. So this guy right here is that 36.87. Or you could say our course is, remember we start north, go all the way around that north would um, we would our course would be 30 323.13 degrees I know this was a long one guys sorry about that um, I will do my best not to try to make them as short as possible next time take care